I'm leaving today for Iceland for a meeting with General Secretary Gorbachev of the Soviet Union. October 10th, 1986, President Reagan was off to meet his Soviet counterpart. If Mr. Gorbachev comes to Iceland in a truly cooperative spirit, I think we can make some progress. Progress in reversing a nuclear arms race that neither country wanted. Between them, the two nations had 70,000 nuclear warheads, enough to destroy the planet several times over. The leaders met in Iceland's capital, Reykjavik. Mr. President, President, do you have any new proposals that you're going to make to Mr. Gorbachev while you're here? We'll discuss all that between us. In fact, they would discuss a proposal so new that no summit had ever considered it, the elimination of nuclear weapons. I wrote the play to try to bring back to life for all of us something that happened secretly behind closed doors at the time. Richard Rhodes writes about the history of the nuclear age. He based his first play on declassified transcripts of the historic Reykjavik meeting. I was just dazzled by the sheer drama of the conversations between these two men. I'd say, <laughs> Rhodes' play Reykjavik had a staged reading in New York recently, starring Richard Easton as President Reagan and J. O. Saunders as Gorbachev. Look, let's be realistic. We haven't made the progress we hoped. That's why I proposed this meeting. Gorbachev and Reagan were both passionately opposed to nuclear weapons. My goal is the total elimination of nuclear weapons. On day one, Gorbachev set the scene. As we've already established, a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. Therefore, it follows that all our strategic nuclear weapons must be reduced to the lowest possible numbers. In then the general secretary presented concrete proposals. Deep, 50% reductions in strategic nuclear weapons. All strategic nuclear weapons, ICBMs, cruise missiles, and bombs on aircraft. Second, medium-range missiles in Europe. Europeans want those missiles out, yours and ours. Therefore, we propose the total elimination of both the USSR's and the USA's medium-range missiles in Europe. Only yours and ours? I thought you wanted the French and the British to eliminate their missiles as well. You noticed, we're making major, major concession here. As the two world leaders wrapped up their first day, the world's media waited outside. Former New York Times reporter, Philip Taubman. Unbeknownst to the press corps, uh, they had agreed on the possibility at that point of some major accords. The next day, they returned to the conference table. On the agenda, Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI, also known as Star Wars. You want to expand the nuclear arms race into space. No, I don't. My scientists <coughs> tell me your SDI won't work. You can't shoot down thousands of warheads flying through space faster than bullets. My uh, feeling was that Star Wars idea was like religion uh, in the minds, minds of American delegation. Rowell Sagdeyev was one of Gorbachev's advisors. I was representing experts especially on science side, who tried to persuade him that there is no direct immediate danger from the Star Wars idea. Technology is not ready. It is uh, like science fiction. But President Reagan was determined to build his missile shield. SDI would be our protection from surprise attack. Yours too, a sort of gas mask. You're too young to remember, Mr. Gorbachev. But back in 1925, all the countries that fought in the First World War agreed not to use poison gas again. But they kept their gas masks, just to be sure. Reagan refused Gorbachev's proposal to confine SDI testing to the laboratory. The two men were stuck in a stalemate. You can see the grimace, the disappointment on Reagan's face, and we all knew that whatever they had been talking about hadn't ended well. Mikhail Gorbachev was disappointed too. They did not really want it. Even though in our discussions Reagan said, and was sometimes the first to say, we must move toward a nuclear weapon-free world. So that was our greatest shock.
The play ends with the press conference that capped the summit. Well, we've made a start here. Reykjavik is not a failure. It's a breakthrough. All of us now have a chance to work seriously toward ending the arm race, abandoning nuclear testing, negotiating a comprehensive test ban treaty, eliminating nuclear weapons, and removing the nuclear threat from mankind. Reykjavik was really the moment that paved the way to a whole new uh, style of arms control agreements, actual reductions of nuclear weapons, rather than just putting a ceiling on the, on the limits that you could reach. In fact, important agreements followed Reykjavik. Both sides agreed to eliminate intermediate range nuclear missiles from Europe. But there are still 20,000 nuclear warheads in the world today. Nuclear disarmament is as urgent as ever. We should continue to try to persuade countries to give them up. We should continue to work to prevent new countries from getting them. And we should continue to work to make sure that the weapons that do exist are well protected. Arms control expert Morton Halpern. And at the same time, you have a no first use agreement, you have a prohibition on testing, you have a prohibition on the production of fissional material, all of which is perfectly verifiable. And you have a common growing perception that these weapons cannot be used for any rational purpose and that they will not be used. For Mikhail Gorbachev, who initiated the Reykjavik summit, the dream of a nuclear weapon-free world is still alive. When we talk about nuclear weapons and what's to be done about them, the answer is to get rid of them.